what is complementary and alternative medicine? It's a group of diverse medical and healthcare systems, practices, and products that are not presently considered to be part of conventional medicine. Alternative medicine is used in the place of conventional medicine. Complementary is used alongside. Generally, there are two or more practitioners treating the same patient. Integrative is when a single practitioner incorporates both allopathic and CAM strategies to treat disease. The functional food industry has um, developed as a result of a rise in interest in CAM therapy. It has certainly become more popular since President Nixon visited China over 40 years ago. While there, one of the reporters developed appendicitis and had to have an emergency appendectomy. During the surgery, he was not given any anesthesia, at least not traditional anesthesia. He was um, anesthetized using acupuncture. He came back to the United States and reported his experiences there. The general public is more interested in alternative medical therapy. Older people tend to be more interested in it so they can maintain their current level of health. Unfortunately, CAM therapies are often considered natural treatments. They're not subject to copyright, like pharmaceutical preparations. Therefore, it's difficult to attract funding and conduct rigorous scientific studies for unregulated products that can be grown in your own backyard. It's also open to people who are peddling unproven, in some cases, harmful substances to an unsuspecting public. For hundreds of years, people believed that illness was caused either by evil spirits or an imbalance in the four humors of the body, blood, phlegm, bile, which would be black and yellow bile. If a patient had a hot condition, for example, fever, they would treat that by removing blood from the body. George Washington was basically bled to death with leeches as the traditional doctors tried to lower his fever. These types of treatments to balance the humors of the body were common practices of standard orthodox medicine. Many diseases were attributed to these imbalances and restoring that balance would prevent disease or treat it. Without anesthesia, patients suffer greatly at the hands of these standard medical doctors. Many turned to alternative medical practitioners because their treatments were more humane. Many alternative practitioners were British midwives, a forerunner of nurses today. They were considered sorcerers and witches, but the treatments they used were often quite effective. For example, they gave foxglove, modern digitalis, for heart problems. Here's a survey conducted in 1924 by the American Medical Association to determine CAM use in their patients. It was actually quite high. The American Medical Association was erected in 1847 to serve as a barrier between them and the irregular practitioners, as they called them. However, alternative medicine remained popular until the development of pain medicines. The father of alternative medicine in the United States was Samuel Heinemann. He disdained modern medical practices. He developed the practice of homeopathy, and most early hospitals in the United States were homeopathic facilities. For that reason, he is the only physician to have a statue commemorating him in the uh, wall of uh, monuments in D.C., at least as of the date of this presentation. However, as I mentioned earlier, a new shift in attitudes toward alternative medicine has been going on. Today, the American Medical Association devotes an entire journal to each of its publications on alternative medical practices. Sometimes making a comparison between modern day practice and alternative practice makes alternative look a little more inviting. Today more people are interested in CAM because of the erosion of the patient-physician relationship. There are just too many different practitioners seeing a single person which can result in incontinuity of care. Economic forces 
Some people cannot afford to go to a physician and so they will turn to CAM practices. Different cultures and religions very familiar with alternative medical practices are represented in our society and are used to these types of practices. Consumers have become more educated and will read about their condition and alternative practices before they ever get a chance to see the allopathic practitioner. There's also a difference in the view of medical uh, practice. Most people in the United States call what they do sick, uh, taking care of sick people, they call it health care, but really most people only come to the physician when they are sick, not when they're well. Alternative medicine not only deals with illness, but with maintaining health status. There are different classifications of alternative medical practices that are represented here on this wheel. Manipulation, mind-body, alternative medical systems, energy therapies, and biologically based therapies. Most people who are using a CAM product are using herbals and supplements and mind-body. CAM is more frequently used in situations where allopathic medicine has little to offer and fewer options, such in, as in cancer, where really all we have is uh, chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery. A quick word about dietary supplements. Research is not required to prove that they're safe or effective. The manufacturer doesn't even have to prove the supplement is effective or even has what it says in the bottle. Dietary supplements are not intended to treat, diagnose, mitigate, prevent, or cure disease, and yet people continue to use them. In some cases, they can be harmful or interact with medicines. A 2010 study on CAM use in the, in the United States found that um, most people who use herbals and alternative therapies are more educated and informed. Most people who use CAM tend to be middle-aged and older adults. General reasons cited for use is to prevent illness and to maintain health, to reduce pain, or to treat a specific health condition. Unfortunately, only about a third of people even tell their health care provider that they're using an alternative medicine therapy. Healthcare providers should routinely ask patients about CAM in a non-judgmental way. Providers could help patients identify those practices that are helpful, harmful, or have no value. It's a mixed bag as to who brought up CAM in that third that said it was even mentioned. Detailed questions should be asked, not just an open in, not just a yes no type question, do you use CAM? Open-ended questions should be asked. If they use CAM, what kind? Topicals, teas, tinctures, aromatherapy? These are the types of topics that could be discussed with a healthcare provider. Interactions, advice as to whether or not to use it, effectiveness, what type of therapy to use and how safe it is. Reasons CAM was not discussed Healthcare provider didn't bring it up. There was no perceived relationship between the two types of treatment, or they thought that their healthcare provider would be dismissive about it. Unfortunately, most CAM users get their information from less than accurate sources. This is why healthcare providers need to be informed so they can help their patients. Almost 40% of respondents in this 2010 study were taking four or more medicines. This is the same group that comprised the largest group of CAM users. Are there any CAM therapies at work? It's difficult to conduct research since the products are not regulated. But a 2012 published review found that there was evidence for acupuncture, arginine and omega-3, vitamin K, antioxidants to prevent cataracts, omega-3 fatty acids to prevent cardiac diseases, glucosamine for arthritis, and spa therapy for fibromyalgia. 
Other therapies out there may work. There's just not a way to prove it. Bottom line, look for patients who may be using CAM therapy. As more and more patients use these practices, we'll need a full picture of all the conventional and complementary practices they're using so that we can effectively manage their care. Medical history forms should include a question about this. Patients should be asked to bring a list of all their therapies. And patients will need a referral system. The NCCAM website provides a number of electronic and online resources that you can refer your patients to. Not every type of medical treatment will fit all people. Evidence-based practice dictates that the best evidence should be used for the best patient possible outcomes, and we need to be informed on these. If you'd like to learn more about complementary and alternative medical practices, I would encourage you to register for KHP 3315 to be taught in spring term 4.